the new Volkswagen Golf Mark 7. It really is a superb car, and this 2 litre TDI SE will be the best seller. Thing is, though, it costs £22,000 for a diesel Golf, which is quite a lot of money. In fact, for slightly less money, you could have something else German with a posher badge. Representing Stuttgart is the Mercedes A180 CDI SE. From Ingolstadt, please welcome the Audi A3 1.6 TDI Sport. And our final contestant, hailing from Munich, the BMW 118D SE. Ah, um, actually, this, this isn't an SE model because BMW didn't have one for us to borrow. So they sent us an M Sports, and unfortunately that cost well over £22,000. But just ignore these scoops and stuff and pretend it is an SE model, OK? To find out which of our four German diesels is best, I'm going to see how they fare across five different categories. So, let's start with which is the most desirable. OK, so it can't be the Golf because its badge just isn't posh enough. It can't be the A3 because it looks like the old A3 and the A3 before it, and it's, it's just too predictable now. It can't be the 1 Series because its face is just too ugly. Yep, the most desirable has to be the A-Class. People have always been willing to pay a little bit extra for a car with a three-pointed star. And unlike the boxy old A-Class, this new one actually looks worthy of that famous badge. In fact, it was also the only car of the four I deem worthy of a wash, because there's just something about its sculptured bodywork that's just hot. Uh, I, I think that's enough of that now. Anyway, inside, the A-Class has been inspired by the Mercedes SLS AMG supercar. There are plenty of sporty touches everywhere, including one-piece sport seats. Nice. But if you're a gadget lover, there's something you are really going to love. You can get a special Mercedes app for your iPhone, and it allows you to connect your phone to the car like never before. And the app includes digital radio, it includes satellite navigation with European wide mapping, and it even allows you to connect to Twitter and Facebook through the car. And you can view your tweets on the screen and look at status updates on Facebook as well, and it'll even read them out to you. Now, to enable your car to do all this, you do have to spend about 500 pounds to have it upgraded. But even when you take that into account, this A180 CDI still comes in at less than £22,000. So, the Mercedes is the most desirable. But how will it fare in our next test? Performance. Well, seeing as we're at an airfield, what better way to find out than a standing quarter mile drag race? Mercedes was the first company to use diesel engines in its passenger cars, and every Merc diesel I've driven has felt fairly punchy, so What's he worried about this race, really? I've got a good start. And uh, now, um, yeah. Come on! Got absolutely destroyed. What the heck happened there? Ah, I've, I've just remembered that that might say Mercedes on there, but underneath this cover is a 1.5 litre diesel made by Renault. And you can actually get pretty much that same engine in a £9,000 Dacia Sandero. If you want your Mercedes A-Class with a proper Mercedes diesel engine, you have to spend over £23,000. Let's just recap the race to check some stats. The two litre Golf was the fastest. The two litre BMW was the second fastest. The 1.6 litre Audi was the third fastest. And the 1.5 litre Renault, sorry, Mercedes, was the slowest. So the Golf has the best performance. And I know it doesn't have the best economy, but really all four cars are so closely matched in that area that out in the real world, they're going to pretty much cost the same to run. Now, let's move on to luxury. And here, there can be just one winner, the A3. This really is a lovely thing to sit in. Everywhere, there are little details which just make it stand out. The screen is motorised, the buttons are solid, and the finish, it's exemplary. 
Really, it just feels more special than the other three cars to sit in, especially with the leather and Alcantara seats, which you can get on this car and still be within the £22,000 budget. That's why the Audi is the most luxurious. So far, every car has each won a category. Well, apart from the one series. Aww, the poor BMW is not really doing very well, is it? However, I think that's about to change. Now, I should point out that the 1 Series is a very comfy car to travel in, but that's not what sets it apart. What is, is that while all the other three cars are front-wheel drive, this one is actually rear-wheel drive, like a proper driver's car should be. And that, plus the way the cockpit wraps around you, kind of tricks you into thinking you're actually driving a sports car. Should you suddenly find yourself on a test track, if you turn off all the driver's aids, the 1 Series will do what all BMWs do. Next to the Sporty 1 Series, the other three cars feel like normal hatchbacks. The Golf handles well, it rides well, and it's quiet. But it just lacks the BMW's fun factor. So does the Audi, while its stiffer suspension makes it have a slightly harder ride. Then there's the A-Class. Sadly, it trails all the others for both handling and comfort. So the BMW is the most fun, but it's not the most practical, and neither, I'm afraid, is the Audi A3. And the same applies, actually, to the Mercedes A-Class, because the most practical car here is, well, yeah, you've, you've guessed it, it's, it's the Golf. This is a car which can cope with all a family's needs. It has more pockets and secret compartments than a magician's coat. It can seat three adults in the back seats if you absolutely have to carry three adults. As for the boot, it's big, it's adjustable, and it's flat enough to use as a bed. So that's another category win for the Golf, which means it's won two categories, while the other cars have won one each. So while you could have a BMW, an Audi or a Mercedes for a little bit less than a two litre TDI Golf, I wouldn't bother.